Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. The vertex is a really important point of a parabola because it represents either the highest or the lowest output value. So often in word problems, we use the vertex to represent the highest point of something. In particular here, we're going to be looking at the maximum height of an object. Always on Earth, the height of an object launched can be modeled by h parentheses t, and that means height as a function of time. It doesn't mean height times time, it's function notation equals negative 16 times t squared plus, and then sorry about the scribble out, um, v0, which we call v0, or the initial velocity times time, plus h0. Now these little zeros represent subscripts. They mean the initial something, so initial velocity and initial height. Let's go ahead and look at a specific problem. This is something you might see in your homework. A ball is thrown into the air with an initial velocity of 80 feet per second. It is hit from a 10 foot platform. After how many seconds will the ball reach its maximum height and what is that height? Okay, I'm going to draw a little picture. So here's 10 feet high. Someone hits a ball and we're asking after how many seconds does it reach this maximum height? So seconds or time is my um, independent variable. It would go on the x-axis and then height is my output. That goes on the y-axis. So we're trying to figure out what time does it take to hit that height, and what is the height? And the name for that point right there is the vertex. So let's go ahead and figure it out. Um, first we need an equation. The height in terms of time is going to be negative 16 t squared, but they gave me some numbers to plug in. And the number to plug in for initial velocity here is 80. So I want plus 80 t. And then the number they gave me for initial height is that 10. Okay, there's my equation. And to figure out how long, what's the time till it reaches the vertex, I'm going to do my um, equation for the vertex, which is negative b over 2a. In my case, negative 80 over 2 times negative 16. Uh, negative 32. And so a negative divided by a negative is going to give me a positive, and then I get 2.5 seconds. So that tells me it takes 2.5 seconds for the ball to get as high as it's ever going to go. That's part one, or part A, I guess. What is that height? That's what we have to figure out next. Well, we know after 2.5 seconds it gets as high as it's going to get. We have to figure out now how high is it. Okay, so what I need to do then to find that height for 2.5 seconds is plug in 2.5 for t. 2.5 squared plus 80 times 2.5 plus 10. So go ahead and grab your calculator. Now, being careful with the order of operations, the first thing I have to do is 2.5 squared. So that's 6.25. A lot of students will on accident try to type that in all at once, and your calculator will mess up that order of operation stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that. And you get, I believe, 110 feet. So that's pretty cool. That tells you that the highest that ball ever gets up in the air is 110 feet off the ground. So this number here would be 110. And the time it takes to get there is 2.5 seconds. So this is an application of hitting a ball into the air. And you could see how this would apply to anything that flies through the air, whether it be like a missile or a sports ball or um, a firecracker. Anything that flies through the air is going to follow the same equation. And we use the vertex to find the maximum height. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two... Um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>